There's a totally bizarre and really little known fact about the correlation coefficient, which even a lot of seasoned data people get wrong. So what's the problem? Imagine that you're interested in the history of movies. So you have this data set, and for a bunch of movies it tells you when this movie was released, how long the movie runs in minutes, and finally a critic's rating. Now from your data you know that there's a positive trend between the movie release year and the length of the movie. So the newer movies tend to run longer. There's a positive correlation between release year and length. And you've also found a positive trend between length and rating. So the longer movies tend to get the better ratings. There's a positive correlation between length and rating. So overall you know that the newer movies tend to be longer and you know that the longer movies tend to be better. Now does this mean that the newer movies tend to be better? In other words, if there's a positive correlation between release year and length and between length and rating, does this mean that there's a positive correlation between release year and rating? And the answer is no. Terms and conditions apply. In fact, the correlation between release year and rating could be zero or even negative. And that's just terribly paradoxical. Imagine the conversation with a friend who asks you, so which movies are better, long ones or short ones? Well, it's the long ones. And which ones are those, the new ones or the old ones? Well, those are actually the new ones. Okay, so then the new movies are the better ones, right? And you have to say, well, actually, maybe no. So here's a real life data set in which this actually happens. And it gives us the name of the movie, the year it was released in, then the length in minutes, and finally a rating between 1 and 4 stars in half star increments. And there's a total of 100 movies. So first let's look at the correlation between release year and movie length. And you can see that actually there's a positive correlation between the two. So the newer movies tend to be longer and the correlation coefficient turns out to be 0.51. So a decent positive correlation. Okay, so how about the relationship between the length of the movie and the rating? Now this correlation again is also positive. There's an upwards trend and the correlation coefficient turns out to be 0.32. So the longer movies tend to get the higher ratings. And now the third scatterplot we have to look at is between year and rating. And you'd probably expect that to be positive as well. But as it turns out, it's actually negative. It's minus 0.15, so that's pretty paradoxical. Now, maybe you'll say that these scatter plots are kind of nice to see the correlation, but that it's kind of hard to see what's going on in the data. Maybe there are some unusual shapes in it or something, which you just can't see on them. So let's look at this in 3D. Here's the same data again, but this time you can see all three axes at the same time. So one for release year, one for length, and then the third one for the rating. And the first thing you might notice is that this data actually looks pretty decent. It's a nice clutter, there's no weird shapes in it, and there's hardly any outliers. Okay, so let me connect this 3D scatter plot to the 2D scatter plots we saw before. If we squint along one axis, then we can kind of see the 2D scatter plot between the two other axes. So for the first one, we have to squint along this axis. And this is actually now the scatter plot between the release year and the movie length, which we've seen before. And then if we spin the plot and we squint along the other axis, then we get the scatter plot between the movie length and the movie rating. And we've seen that one before as well. And then the third scatter plot, we have to again squint along the last axis. And when we do that, we get the scatter plot between the release year and the rating. So you can see that I haven't just made up these 2D scatter plots that I showed you before. We have this 3D data cloud, and it really does translate into these kind of paradoxical 2D scatter plots without any weird shapes in the data or tremendous outliers. Just to illustrate this, I've made up another data set that shows the same behavior, just stronger. Here's the same kind of 3D scatter plot, and this data set definitely doesn't have any outliers or weird shapes in it. I've actually sampled this from a three dimensional normal distribution, so this data set is pretty much as well behaved as the data set gets. And again, we can squint at this data set from different angles to get the 2D scatter plots where we can see the correlation between the variables. 
So first, let's look at the correlation between release year and movie length again. And you can see that this is a pretty strong correlation, it turns out to be 0.44, and it's statistically significant. Okay, next is the correlation between length and rating. And this too is a positive correlation, and it comes down to 0.52, and this too is statistically significant. And then comes the third correlation between the year and the rating. And this is pretty strongly negative, it's actually minus 0.42. And this correlation as well is statistically significant. So while some of the correlations in the real life data set were pretty small, the negative one was just minus 0.15, in this data set all three correlations are considerable. So they were 0 0.44, 0 0.52, and then the paradoxical negative one was minus 4.2. These are not massive correlations, but they are pretty respectable. So maybe you were thinking that you need kind of a weird non-standard distribution to get this kind of effect. But that's not true. You can totally generate such a paradoxical data set from a normal distribution. Or maybe you thought that it's a matter of statistical significance and that the results in these paradoxes are actually not statistically significant. But that's not true either as you've seen in the last data set. All these correlations, both the two positive ones and the third one that's negative between the release year and the rating, all of these are statistically significant. So this is really confusing, and maybe it's even a little bit unsettling that it's possible, because it's so counterintuitive. But there's hope, and that is that if the two positive correlations are strong enough, then the third correlation must be positive as well. And in the next video I'll show you a conceptual framework that makes it really easy to think about this, but also to derive this bound.